going to be speaking to Acting Assistant Superintendent of Police, Mr. Ashraf Ali. Mr. Ali has over 25 years of service in the TTPS, and he's been one of the institution's media ambassadors for the past six years. He's currently attached to the Port of Spain Division. Let me say a special good evening to Acting Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Ashraf Ali. Good night, sir. How are you? How are you? Thank you so much okay. for joining us. Yeah, hearing you loud and clear. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to be a part of our program this evening. That's not a problem. We are here to serve. Yes, indeed. Now, when you look at the definition of extortion, uh, the legal term, of course, is demanding money by menace. Uh, of course, we know it as protection tax um, and so many other names that it goes by uh, in our local plans. Uh, now, there's also various types of extortion, which include schemes like uh, blackmail and ransomware, what have you. But what we're seeing here is the most common form of extortion, where you have uh, business owners who are basically uh, placed under pressure by individuals demanding uh, money. Uh, how, I mean, the first thing I have to ask you is, uh, how did we get to this point? Is this a, a new... Uh, as far as um, as far as the criminal elements, something being pursued that is new, or has it been around for quite some time that the TTPS has been dealing with these matters? Well, um, firstly, I, I want to say that it, it is not a new phenomenon. It has been um, within our society for a number of years. Unfortunately, it's one of the one of the more difficult offence to treat it or or get rid of, as the case may be. Um, Basically, the, the, way it is, the way it occurs, um, it's, it's challenging, right? So, demanding money by menace is really under the, the laws of Trinidad and Tobago on the last knee, Act, Chapter 11, to, um, 11, 12, Section 31, speaks about demanding money with menace, and then we have 32, which also speaks of demanding money with menace, with intent to steal some items, but with the one that we really um, dealing with directly, is demanding money my mess with a number of persons and a number of persons who go to certain businesses, business owners, and ask for monies so that they would not be targeted for targeted by the criminal offenses and criminal the criminal enterprises. And so that that's a that's a challenge by itself. In that it's difficult to treat with it. Um, we had some successes. Most recently, there was a media release that three persons was was in fact arrested and charged for um, demanding money by menace. Um, that's one of the success that we had such for, um, thus far. The challenge with it is that the nature of the offence it's so intimate. It's difficult for victims come forward because the victims themselves are, um, are afraid for um, are fear for their lives, fear for the lives of the family and fear from the, for their businesses because they don't want anybody um, destroying their business. So that's how intimate it is and this is why the criminal elements take advantage of this knowing fully well that many of the persons who are victims of this genius crime do not come to the police and report it. Right. So, so basically, I mean, when you look at, just to shift a bit, when you look at, for example, home invasions, um, what is looked at is soft targets. Is, is that the same as in regards to uh, what these criminals look for, somebody who basically uh, just wants to have their business running, protect their family at all costs? Do they, are they now perceived as a soft target, someone to move in and basically demand money from?
um, persons get themselves in problems. So it's 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 a difficult thing to tell the tell a business person and persons who are who are victims to this do not pay because honestly speaking, let's be real. When the individual looking at their family, their livelihood at risk and at threat, persons make they make a decision. Um, that it may not be the best decision to make at that point in time, but they make a decision, and sometimes and that, that is why they have to, in some circumstances, live with those decisions. There are many persons who reject the offer and stand their ground in terms of refuse to pay, right? But yeah. some persons do, in fact, pay. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you look, uh, basically, if you get into the psyche of some of these business owners, I mean, they would have sit down and make an assessment and say, listen, um, I, I don't have the privilege of leaving my business and having it, you know, try to run it remotely in some other part of the world. I have to stay here. My children are going to school. Um, here, to, here I'm grounded. So you know what? If it means that I have to take uh, less as far as profit and put it out to these criminal elements just to run my business, uh, and you know, apply my trade, I guess that's a decision that they will make at that point in time. But let me ask you this, I mean, if we expand on this, um, there's also an issue of trust because there may be people who are hired in certain um, businesses who of course would share that information. Uh, you know, I mean, you say people who go out there and test the waters, but there are people who say, listen, the boss man or the boss lady, they go to the bank on a Friday or Tuesday, there's a lot of money there, a lot of money is stored, they're weak, they're cowards, if you apply some pressure, I'm certain they're going to give you, uh, give in to you. When you get out there and start to investigate, are these some of the dots that you're connecting to see exactly how did this whole thing come about? again again if we as i said if we expand even further i mean that in itself does give us an economic black eye i mean because now you have people with the entrepreneurial spirit who say listen i, I can't even go out there and try to apply my trade or set up uh, any sort of, of business because um, i can put my life and the life of my family members under threat because uh, let's be honest, when these people make their call, they know you. They know when I say they know you, they know what school your children are going to. They know when you leave uh, your business, when you return to your business. They know very intimate, um, you know, information about your movements. And now, taking in consideration uh, the effect that it has on on our economy. Do you believe that a special task force should be set up to, to look at this? Under the, 
gang, at the gang um, of their gang members. So we do have gang, uh, gang intelligence officers doing investigations and intelligence work within, within all the divisions trying to weed out some of this, these situations. But the challenge with it, like I said, is that when, if we don't get victims coming forward or even coming forward when somebody approaches them for the first time, um, asking for the money and then and, 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 and turn out turn it out to you and say listen you need to pay X money you need to pay uh, your, your taxes or else if we don't get those information coming forward to us um, it's challenging for us to treat with it because of we, we, we would not know um, who has been targeted unless the person has been a victim or it become a, a victim, it become a victim and reported to the police that is when we will know a victim is That's how criminals uh, are, are basically uh, motivated. That's how they're engineered. Uh, basically, getting everything or whatever they can uh, for for nothing. They're not going out there to put in eight hours or work around the clock to make sure that they they toil in the vineyards to produce anything. They are coming for what belongs to others, and, and we need to put that in, in the right perspective. And, and and also, you know, looking at, at a lot of what you're saying there as well, um, you know. Many of these families, again, have to make this personal decision. They have to make their own assessment. And as you said, many would not, um, business people would not report many of these incidents to the TTPS. So you are left in the dark and what move. And one has to ask the question, is it a matter of lack of trust or is it that they simply don't believe in the system? Because uh, when you look at the law section 31 to 33, uh, the penalty of that is a term of years of imprisonment, depending upon the nature of the threats. And uh, also looking at the fact that the penalty for the offense could be a term of imprisonment ranging from five to ten years. Uh, and, I mean, 
Is, is there a trust issue? Is there an issue of, of people who just simply say, you know what, it's too much of a headache to even report it. Either I pack up, close down, and go, or I simply just pay the money. Well, there's not an easy answer to that because there are several factors that maybe the, the victim will consider. One, their security, their security of their family uh, and their businesses in you know, one aspect of it. Yes, and then there's the other aspect of it where we have to look at that sometimes they believe that it is not worth, worth their risk, the risk to their lives and the risk to their family. And then we have the other side of it where they do not believe that the system itself is going to afford them the necessary justice, nor do they believe that the police service is capable of treating with such a, such a issue. That's the reality of it, and we have to accept it. And the police service has, uh, is working towards changing that mindset that we can treat with these issues, but we have to accept the fact that there is, in fact, um, Yeah. So once we have so once we have acknowledged it and we have acknowledged it, it's working towards gaining this trust and confidence in the business sector specifically who are actually targeted for this. Right? Our business individuals. To to give them the reassurance that we can treat the situation. But there's a lot of influences and a lot of other factors to consider. Many of these many of the big um, the victims do not want to be witnesses to these matters because they didn't want to come they wouldn't even want to come to court or even Make it known that they would have reported an incident of, 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 of this nature. Of course. And, and so one has to ask the question now, is it a matter that we need to implement um, better legislation in this country, uh, which can help assist you in the reduction of such a crime? Uh, because, you know, how easy is it to deal with this in a court of law? You're talking about you have to perhaps gather evidence. You have to document threats all of these things need to be documented and you know the average citizen may not have the expertise in doing these things so again taking all of that in consideration maybe that's why sometimes they, they don't report it because they ask themselves but can i go the distance is this case going to drag on for years will i be going in and out of court will i be a soft target will i be putting myself in a spotlight you know, and, and all of these questions are asked because, again, it is not just about the people, who, the owners of the business, but it's their family as well who fall under threat. So do you believe that perhaps better legislation, do you, do you need that, uh, you know, in order to get to this root problem? I, I think it, it, it is, there's merit towards it in that we may need to revisit some of the, the legislation and how it is structured um, to afford us some opportunity to deal with the current environment. Um, because if, if, if I, in, in, under the last year, if someone stole, uh, steals an item, sorry, if someone steals an item from you, say they steal a, a motor vehicle, and the motor vehicle is recovered, there's clear identification that we can utilize identification to identify that the vehicle is, belongs to a particular owner, together with some problems as well as some property, but when it comes to this specific, specific um, offense demanding money, there's no way that we can trace the money because there's no, there's no paper trail, it's cash handed over and that's it. So yeah. it, becomes, it, it becomes the victim words against the criminal words as to what has happened and the police only can the only, police could only yeah. work with evidence and yeah. if we don't have evidence, it is difficult for us to prove the case against the individual who was demanding money. Now, if we get information early, um, post the event, we can do what we consider to be as some sting operations, where we can only in the criminal the, the, the offenders in the act of handing over the monies. But then that is dependent on the victim and whether or not the victim is willing to go down that road. Yeah. And like, like you said, it, 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 it's, always a, it's always a challenge because at the end of the day, the victim has to make a decision whether or not they want to proceed further, whether they believe that this, this is worth the risk both to their family and themselves. So it is, it is a, um, we're in a boundary when it comes to offense, this particular offense, but at the end of the day, causes problem not only from a, a victim perspective or an individual perspective, but from
from an economic perspective, it is hampering our business. It is hampering a lot yeah. of businesses within the, within our country. Yeah, of course. And, and, I, and I agree with you. I want to ask you one last question before we close off here. Based on your experience and, and what you've witnessed, when that call is made, that first call is made to apply pressure on the individual to pay this money, should they or should they not pay? My, my advice to them from a, from, from a law enforcement perspective is do not pay the money. You, the first time, you, if you pay once, it means that you are already in, in that situation. So you'll have to pay again. Do not pay. Inform the police, please. And, and I'm asking the public that they may not have the confidence at this point in time, but it's, it's, it's a bigger picture. It's not one. It's a number of persons doing it. And if one or two business individuals come forward, like yeah. the last the last, the last situation we have, we were able to arrest three persons because those individuals, those business individuals decided that they are not tolerating it and they stood up for the right thing. We have to stand up as a country for the right thing. Yeah. So it doesn't have to stand up. And if we stand up together, the system will work. But if we always believe that the system is not going to work for us, we are already on the opposite side and we are allowing the criminals to get the upper hands on us. So I am saying to the individuals, stand up, bring that information to the police and let and give the police an opportunity to treat with the situation and address the situation. And if it is at that point in time that they do not get the satisfaction from the police, then I, I, can, I can say that then you can justify, you will be justified to say you don't have trust in the police. But they cannot make the decision that you don't have unless, trust in the police unless you without, try. Giving, without giving us the opportunity I to treat with it. I agree with you. Acting Assistant Superintendent, I want to thank you so much for taking time out, enlightening us on this topic. Uh, and uh, hopefully that we will, of course, uh, have you back uh, again in uh, the, well, it, as early as possible, because I know we could expand on it some more. But again, thank you so much for your brute, uh, brute honesty as far as do not pay it, stand your ground. Because once you start paying, you will always, always, uh, be in the hands of these criminal elements. So again, thank well, you so much. No problem, and, and I just don't want to make it appear that I'm quoting any particular individual, but I would not use the word stand your ground, but stand up for the right thing. All right, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much.